This is the History of Portugal podcast, an Eat to My Own Beat podcast. New episodes every Friday. Check us out on our Facebook page, the History of Portugal podcast, on YouTube, as well as my website, www.eattomyownbeat.com. This is the History of Portugal podcast, an Eat to My Own Beat podcast. New episodes every Friday. Check us out on our Facebook page, the History of Portugal podcast, on YouTube, as well as my website, www.eattomyownbeat.com. The History of Portugal podcast, episode 108, Campaigns Against Valencia. The capture of America brought the Almoravids within reach of Valencia, which was officially under the control of al Qadir, the former Taifa rule of Toledo. He had been installed here in 1086 by the Castilians after they took over Toledo. al Qadir's pop- unpopular rule in Valencia was supported by a Castilian garrison headed by Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, a Castilian noble and mercenary better known today as El Cid. In October 1092, when El Cid was away from the city, there was an insurrection and a coup d'etat led by Qadi, Abu Ahmad Jafan ibn Jafar, Jahaf, sorry. The latter called for the help from the Almoravids in America, who sent a small group of warriors to the city. The Castilian garrison was forced to leave and al Qadir was captured and executed. However, the Almoravids did not send enough forces to oppose al Sid's return, and Ibn Jahaf's undetermined undermined his popular support by proceeding to install himself as ruler, acting like yet another Taifa king. El Cid began a long siege of the city, completely surrounding it, burning nearby villages and confiscating the crops of the surrounding countryside. Ibn Jahaf agreed at one point to pay tribute to El Cid in order to end the siege, which resulted in an Almoravids in the city being escorted out by El Cid's men. For reasons that remain unclear, an Almoravid relief army, led by Tashfin's nephew, Abu Bakar ibn Ibrahim, approached Valencia in September 1093 and then retreated without engaging El Cid. Ibn Jahab continued negotiations. In the end, he refused to pay El Cid's tribute and a siege mounted. By April 1094, the city was starving and he decided to surrender it shortly after. El Cid re-entered Valencia on the 15th of June, 1094, after 20 months of siege. Rather than ruling through a puppet again, he took direct control as king. Meanwhile, also in 1094, the Almoravids seized control of the entire Taifa kingdom of Badas Jof after its ruler of al Mutwakil sought his own alliance with the Castile. The Almoravid expedition was led by Sir Ibn Abu Bakar, who had been appointed as governor of Seville. The Almoravids then returned their attention to Valencia, where another of Ibn Tashman's nephews, Muhammad Ibn Abraham, was ordered to take the city. He arrived outside its walls in October of 1094 and began attacks on the city. The siege ended when El Cid launched a two-sided attack. He sent a, short, a sortie from one gate, city gate that was posed as the main force, occupying the Almoravid troops, while personally leading another force from a different city gate and attacked their undefended camp. This inflicted a first major defeat on the Almoravids on the Iberian Peninsula. After his victory, El Cid executed Ibn Jahaf by burning him alive in public, perhaps in retaliation for his treachery. Al Cid fortified his new kingdom by building fortresses along the southern approaches to the city and fended against future Almoravid attacks. In late 1096, Ibn Aisha led an army of 30,000 men to the besieged strongest to besiege the strongest of these fortresses. Pina Cadelia, just south of Extavia, El Cid confronted them and called on Aragon for reinforcements. When the reinforcements approached, the Almoravids lifted the siege but laid trap for El Cid's forces as they marched back to Valencia. 
They successfully am ambushed the Christians in a narrow pass located between the mountains and the sea. But Alcides managed to rally his troops and repel the Almoravids yet again. In 1097, the Almoravid governor of Extavia, Ali ibn al Hajj, led another incursion into Valencian territory, but was quickly defeated and pursued by or to Almerinia. Oh, sorry, Almanera, which El Cid then captured after a three month siege. 1097, Yusuf ibn Tashfin led another army into Al Andalus, setting out from Cordoba with Muhammad ibn al Hajj as his field commander. He marched against Alfonso VI, who was in Toledo at the time. The Castellanians were rooted in the Battle of Consuguera. El Cid was not involved, but his son, Diego, was killed in the battle. Soon after, Alvar Fanez was also defeated near Kunica in another battle with the Almoravids led by Ibn Asha, Ayesha. The latter followed up the victory by ravaging the lands of Valencia and defeated another army sent by El Cid. Despite these victories in the field, the Almoravids did not capture any major new towns or fortresses. El Cid attempted to, to Christianize Valencia, converting his main mosque into a church and establishing a bishopric, sorry, but ultimately failed to attract many new Christian settlers in the city. He died 10th of July, 1099, leaving his wife, Jimena, in charge of the kingdom. She was unable to hold off Almoravid pressures, which culminated in the siege of the city by the veteran Almoravid commander, Mazadi, Mazdali. In early spring of 1102, in April, May, Jimena and the Christians who wished to leave the city were evacuated with the help of Alfonso VI. The Almoravids occupied the city after them. That same year, with the capture of Valencia, continuing with another triumph, Yusuf ibn Tashfin celebrated and arranged for his son, Ali ibn Yusuf, to be publicly recognized as his heir. Taifa, king of Zarzago, Zar Zarago, Zaragoza, sorry, the only other Muslim power left in the peninsula, sent an ambassador of the occasion and signed a treaty with the Almoravids. By the time Tashfin died in 1106, the Almoravids were thus in control of all Andalus except for the Zar Zar Oga, or Zargoza. In general, they did not reconquer any of the lands lost to Christian kingdoms in the previous century. Thank you for listening to the History of Portugal podcast, a Eat to My Own Beat podcast. New episodes every Friday. Get more information on the History of Portugal podcast on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out www.eattomyownbeat.com for more information on our travels. Thank you for listening to the History of Portugal podcast, a Eat to My Own Beat podcast. New episodes every Friday. Get more information on the History of Portugal podcast on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out www.eattomyownbeat.com for more information on our travels.